Peggy 18. And we're jumping right into the action here in an early game of Evolve. We've got Goliath setting out just a little bit ahead of our hunters. I'm Aaron AC Chambers, joined by co-founder of Turtle Rock Studios, Chris Ashton. And uh, before, uh, just as things get underway here, Chris, talk to me about the early game strategy for Goliath. Well, he's going to try to get away from the hunters as quickly as possible, and he's also going to try to find food. So first priority is run, second priority is find food. The food's going to give you armor, it's going to allow you to stage up. So right now he's just trying to get distance and food. And staging up so important, only does it make him more tanky, but he gets to place more skill points and all of those abilities he has at his disposal. But right now, he is feeling a little bit weak. We can see all of the hunters have joined the battlefield. Immediately, we're going to see the trapper drop his sound spike that'll help them track alive. But they're not gonna even really going to need it that much, as they've already got a bead on him. We can see his tracks on the ground there. And uh, so as they continue to pursue him out, talk to me. Like, obviously, Goliath gets a little bit of a start. But uh, what's, I mean, you, you talked to me about the plan so far give distance, but how do you how do you deal with knowing that you're going to have all of these hunters barreling down on you in just a moment? Well, it's kind of the path that he takes. It's, it's being careful where he runs. If he if he scares birds um, out of the out of the path, kind of leaving leaving the signs behind. Um, so, so would you say subterfuge is a big part of the early game for Goliath? Sure. <laughs> Well, we can see they've actually caught up with him now, and he is being pursued into the jungle, and he is using the foliage to the best of his advantage, taking a little bit out of the way um, uh, paths and the sun. Yeah, it looks like Griffin's peeled off from the rest of the pack, and that's it's a pretty common tactic mm. for the hunters to use, where the rest of the team flushes the monster out, and Griffin's able to trap him in that mobile arena. So it's a risky move, but a lot of times it pays off, especially in the early stages of the game. Yeah, it looks like, though, Goliath knows what's going on. And yeah, you can see, if you see the red that he can detect moving around him, he knows that's one of the hunters, and he's probably aware that that's going to be the trapper. And Oh, this creates such a big opportunity for Goliath, though. He's got a bead on him, and he doesn't know it. Oh, he's in trouble and pounced on immediately. And this is one of those risks you run, and it's right at the core of all the mechanics here in, uh, in Evolve, the fact that as one, you're just not powerful enough to deal with it. As four, though, at this stage especially, you can go to town. Now, he's incapacitated but not dead, firing his pistol. They're going to try to get him back up as quickly as he can now. As we see Goliath begin to fight, I mean, is this a fight he really wants to take, or is he just trying to do some damage and eventually create some space? I think, you know, when he had Griffin down, he had an opportunity there. Anytime you get one guy down, the fight's going your favor but they picked him back up, so at this point, if I was Goliath, I'd start looking for an opportunity to get out of there. You kind of see how well your, your offense is going, and if it's not going well, you, you, you tend to try to get out. Well, we can see he is taking a lot of damage, and now that all four are up, we can see all of their abilities beginning to synergize. We can see the shielding and the healing coming out from the medic, the shielding coming from the support. We can see uh, our trapper is getting more and more involved. He's hitting very good harpoons. There's harpoons uh, borderline immobilizing Goliath. And he has to deal with those before he can do much of anything else. And of course, our assault class, who is up front, close and personal, wants to tank the damage and wants to deal as much damage as he can. But it does look like this fight might be winding down soon. As, you know, they just got a beat on him. Yeah, he's going to try to get away now. He got tagged by the medic's tranquilizer dart. He's going to be able to still get away, but you can see those few steps he takes between leaps, he's so slow. It is worn off now, but there's just so many skill shots. And oh, look at the support! got caught out by one of those native plants on the map and as we see Goliath try to find some space and something else to eat, talk to me about the design of the map itself and, and why it plays such a role in such a competitive game. We wanted it to really be another player in the game and in a sense the environment is a third player uh, between the AI and the environment, the carnivorous plants. These things create opportunities for either team to take advantage of. Up, and we can see that carnivorous plan has given the Goliath quite an advantage. It allowed him to create some space. They had to bust him out. It slowed the hunters down. And now he's going to rank two. He's leveling up to, uh, to stage two in his evolution. Oh, he's got such a good high ground position. Coming from downtown with a big smash. And that's going to send them scattering. Now it looks like he doesn't want to fight. Just wanted to do what damage he could to throw them off base, to get them confused. But we see our trappers right behind him, helping to slow him down, hitting those harpoons. Let's see if he can catch up with him. Yep, he's got the mobile arena ready to go. Going to try to toss that out in front of him, then hit him with the harpoon. There he goes. He's let it go. And the leap, not enough, harpooned him from behind, and now he's trapped. Now, this is one of the biggest gameplay mechanics as well, that mobile arena. Talk to me what, uh, about what that means for both the Goliath player and for the hunter. 
for the Goliath, it means he's trapped in there for a certain amount of time. For the hunters, it's an opportunity for them to chew through his armor and to do some permanent damage. Oh, we can see, oh, the trapper actually got knocked in the river. Now, I know there's a tyrant. Yes, the tyrant down in the river. You have to be so aware of your surroundings in Evolve if you're one of the hunters. As he's, that's actually a one shot. He's, and he's not just down and incapacitated. There's no resuscitating him. That's going to be two minutes he's off of the map entirely as Goliath continues to just run over the rest of his team. What kind of, I mean, put it in context for me. How big of a loss is it whenever you lose one of your teammates like that as the hunters? It's huge. Uh, they're designed to be co-op. Each one of them has a, a, a very specific function that is vital to their success. So as soon as one guy's out, uh, they're at a huge disadvantage. And we can see Goliath's actually running here, but th since they're down a man, th how does that change their strategy and how they want to approach uh, Goliath? Well, they definitely want to be a lot more cautious. If Goliath turns to fight them, he, he, he might be able to pull out the win here. Um, so they'll be a little bit more defensive. They'll start uh, uh, anticipating where he's coming. They're not going to get. They're not going to chase him as closely as they would normally. They want to keep a bead. They don't want to lose him, right? But they want to. They want to not really force the fight themselves. They want right. to wait till Griffin comes back. Don't want to take that big of a risk. Now the problem is, we saw they had to stop and deal with that tyrant. Otherwise, one of them might get snatched. Goliath is actually utilizing one of the best comeback mechanics. We can see how banged up he is. A very nice visual system of damage. He's bruised. He's bloody. And you can't regen health and evolve if you're the monster, but what you can do is feed on wildlife and regen your armor, and that allows you to be just so tanky. It looks like that's his number one priority right now, as the hunters just wait on their trapper to get back on the map, but, you know, and now that they know that he's coming back in, we see already the mines being laid. Talk to me about the strategy we're seeing employed by the hunters right now. So they're really just trying to turtle up at the moment. They're trying to wait. Griffin's got 30 seconds to come in, so all they're trying to do is last that 30 seconds before Griffin comes back. Another big smash, but... Uh, he's able to corner two of them. Now, 20 seconds right now, it seems like such a short amount of time, but just look at how much damage the Goliath is doing as they're waiting for him to come back in. And lacking that immobilization means they can't kite him effectively. That's why he's able to charge on top of them, why he's able to bang them down so damn hard. And yet, we're going to see already the Medic is down. Nice play from the support, though, using the Burst Stealth ability, that's his class ability. Bought some time for everyone to kind of reset, but they're still hurting. In the meantime, though, the Trapper's just about to parachute down. The fight's raging on, but talk to me how they're going to try to change this up now that they're back to full strength. They're just waiting for Griffin to get back in. Um, Assault's going to try to to draw his attention. That Lightning Rifle does a ton of damage, so he'll try to draw the aggro and use his personal shield to, to negate that a little bit. And, oh, we're actually going to see another incapacitation on the support. Losing the support is just crippling. You know, you don't have the orbital strike that you can call in. You don't have the personal shielding. And this is going to happen when you don't have that. However, with the trapper back in, that's going to give them a chance to maybe cut him. But so far, no good harpoons. He's just continuing to deal massive amounts of damage and run over this team who is once again running at three quarter strength. We're going to see, yep, potentially another incapacitation. But uh, he's setting up, he's landing another smash, and yep, there we go, one's down, that's going to be the Medic and the Goliath, just continuing to pound away, setting up a huge assault on the, no! Oh, you jerks, cutting the feed at the very last minute. That's, uh, that's not fair, man.